Hey, how the hell are you? Well, that's just fantastic. Today I got a project, and the project I have some drums, and in the drums I have a kick, and let's hear it. So it definitely sounds fine, but sometimes I find acoustic kicks lack a little bit of that like chest thumping uh, joinks in them. So today I want to show you kind of a film trick to fix something like that. Of course, some people use extra samples, but in this case, this is a pretty dense arrangement. You're going to hear it in a second. So I don't want to add an extra sample. That's going to be too much clutter in the mix and it's already a challenging mix. Right below my kick track, I'm going to insert another track. And I'm gonna call this track Kick Joinks. And I'm gonna put a couple of plugins here. So the first one is the old JS Tone Generator. Let's throw that on there. Jesus. It just <laughs> it just starts blasting. So let's let's turn that down for a second. And the other plugin that I want is Reagate. So right click, developers, Kakos, Reagate. And that's right there. And the next thing I'll do is I'll go to the routing of my kick track and I'll just drag it from there to directly to the plugin. And that will automatically send from one, two of this track to three, four of this track, which are the auxiliary inputs for the gate. And I'll just set it all the way up and I'll close this. And here on rear gate, I'll set my main input to auxiliary. And since my song is in C sharp minor, I'm gonna select C sharp from the notes here and let's hear what that sounds like. So obviously too high. That's pretty low, but let's go down even one more octave. Ooh. So that should be around like 40 Hertz or something. If you're, if you're on a phone or watching this on a laptop, you're probably not hearing that. So check back later, I guess, on, on proper headphones or, or a good speaker pair. And now if I turn Reagate on, Obviously the gate is not open yet, so none of the sound is coming through. So right now, if I play, nothing is coming through, so I'm gonna set my threshold. And let's turn this up just a little bit so we can all hear it. So now each time our kick hits, the gate opens and a little burst of a sine tone comes in. And we can use the controls here to kind of shape that. And I'll show you one way if you need a little bit of a guide on how to set these values. And that is using this script called Music Math by TomPad. I'll put a link to where to download that in the description and give you a few more examples of how to use it in the blog. But in Music Math, you have your BPM of the project up here. And if I click on any of these values down here, it'll tell me the duration of that beat type in my tempo. So with 60 BPM, it's a pretty easy um, calculation because, because if you want to get the duration of a beat, you go 60,000. One second is 1,000 milliseconds and one minute is 60 seconds. And if you divide that by the BPM, you get the duration of one beat in milliseconds. So this one's a little more convenient because it's already in Reaper and it can tell me like all kinds of values for any beat type. And again, because it's 60 BPM, this is easy to do. If your tempo is 72, it's gonna be a lot more math. I don't want this burst to be too, too long because again, I don't wanna like crowd up an already dense mix. So maybe let's just try a 16th. And what I can do is I can set the release of my gate to 250. I'll set it to pre-open just so that we don't get that kind of upfront click. And now let's hear what that sounds like. Even this to me is a little bit too long. So maybe let's try it at 30 second. By the way, if you want, you can also click here and copy this value and just paste it wherever you want. So that's kind of fun too. Yeah, that's pretty good. So now let's hear them together. And now let's hear it in the whole mix. So 
So yeah, it's really kind of giving it lots of rumble. It's not really making any changes to the rest of the mix. So it's a pretty safe option to kind of pull out last minute if you feel like you need to. And of course you can also use other shapes like triangles or saw. The reason I use a sine wave is that a sine wave is just a single pure tone. So that's what I like about it. But if I come and switch this to a triangle, this is all this extra noise that I don't need in my project. So sine wave is kind of the classical choice here. And already your kick has kind of the rest of the tone. So our kick on its own, together. Yeah. So yeah, that was the trick. And that's gonna be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you like the work I do, you can support the channel by becoming a member here on YouTube, or you can make one-time donations through buymeacoffee.com. All those links will be in the description. Thanks to all our members and previous donors. We have a few tier two members, so you're entitled to a mixing feedback. So send them to me. You can just go to the about section of my page and there's an email address there. So get in touch. Check you out later, bye.